Deputy I have five minutes, so I'll just direct my comments very on a focused manner. Trust is essential, Minister, as you can imagine, and you received a letter on the 16th of January, which hasn't been acknowledged, um, in relation to basic issues, access to records. An individual has been to the High Court eight times for just access to records in relation to his sister, a dedicated counselling service, issues in relation to care and medical cards, and issues in relation to housing. If those type of basic needs can't be met in a speedy, efficient manner, then talking about the UN and human rights and talking about a consultative forum is absolute nonsense, and I don't wish to be unduly critical, but I am someone that comes from Galway. I have both personal and professional experience of the home, and I have read absolutely every document. And so let me put this in perspective. In 2012, in the course of the Interdepartmental Working Group, you know, Minister, and I've told you months ago that the uh, uh, issues in relation to mother and homes, mother and baby homes, and in particular Vesper and Tume were highlighted in an eternal memo. It said that, that serious concerns in relation to patient safety, medical care, accountancy irregularities, and the possible interference with birth and death certificates and so on. Two briefing documents talking about a scandal that will dwarf all other scandals and correspondence from major figures in the Catholic Church looking for babies for America and so on. Fast forward, actually, that was ignored, not acted upon, notwithstanding the very good men who signed their names and said there must be action, but there's no follow-up. Then we had the very good work that's been mentioned by the journalist Conal O'Farherty. And then we've got Catherine Corliss, a local historian, and she highlights in a, between 2011 and 13, a, after that work, 796 names. She paid four euro for each death certificate, and she outlined that the, the new, there were newborn babies up to nine years old, one child dying every fortnight. Now, not only was there silence, but there was out outright denial. And we had Miss Terry Prone on behalf of the Bond Secure Sisters responding to a documentary maker. If you come here, you'll find no mass grave, no evidence that children were ever so buried, and local police, local police casting their eyes to heaven and saying, yeah, a few bones were found, but this was an area where famine victims were buried. So that was the official response through a communications. Um, uh, company. Now, the Commission was set up in February 15. There were, we, the Government was shamed into setting up that Commission. It had a number of targets that weren't met, and we're here today hearing that they want a further extension. The serious question has to be asked, why wasn't sufficient resources put in, and why wasn't a scoping exercise of sufficient strength and scope done to allow this very detailed work that they have to do to do in a, in a time. Now it will be into its fourth year. On top of that, in terms of trust, each and every report has been delayed, with the exception of the first interim report, which simply asked for an extension of time in relation to two reports. The second report was published on September 16. You received that minister in September 16. It was published in April 17. And it highlighted the Commission felt the necessity to publish a report to say the manner in which unaccompanied children and mother and baby homes, the manner in which they have been excluded from the redress system or an alternative redress system just did not defy logic. No answer from the government in relation to that, simply ignored. The technical report was on your desk in June 17. Certainly the options were on your desk. The full report was on your desk in September 17. It was published on the 5th of December 17. Again, a significant delay. A four-page document, a note that does absolutely nothing in that report to set the context at that stage in December 17, more than two years after it was set up. It describes, it's a descriptive note. It places nothing in context and it gives no provisional conclusions. The discovery in March by the Commission in 20 chambers partially, partially examined of human remains caused international headlines. But what's important for us and for survivors and for the families is what happened in relation to the excavation? Where is it at? What is the role of the coroner? 
who has a serious statutory role under law. Where is the report tonight, Minister, in relation to his role? What inquests have been carried out? If not, why not and when? In talking about consultation and collaboration and TDs welcoming that here tonight, that's their business and they may well see the need for it. What I see the need for is honesty, open communication with survivors and their families and a respect and dignity that's absolutely lacking. When I look, and I'm not particularly speaking about you, Minister, at all in a personal capacity, but I'm talking about the delays. And when I look at the technical report and I look at page 56 and the five options, which I'll come back to if the Chair allows me, but what concerns me in the summary is the potential to identify individuals interred in Tume is one that poses many challenges. I can understand that. But then it goes on to say one of those challenges is the potential damage to relations between the public, the church and the government. What kind of a challenge is that? Why should that be identified? And in relation to the five, that tells you something about where we're going. And in relation to the five options, that's a decision for government and for this House to make in the best informed manner that we can. And you have given that over to a County Council that hasn't enough staff to repair the roads. And at nine o'clock tonight, we'll be looking at those deficiencies. And they're sending out a box ticking exercise to ask residents and neighbours to tick boxes. That's something that should be done in this House after a meaningful consultation. So while I understand you have a difficult role, Minister, I would expect at the very least that when reports come and the date is on them, that they're published immediately. Thank you, Deputy. Thank you, Chair.